I can remember the morning having breakfast with my dad, but apart from that, it's like a blank week. From what I understand, I was a passenger in the, in the car and a truck crashed into the side of the car and crashed into the side that I was passenger in. I've just been told I can't remember a thing. He was in a coma for over a week and during that time, it was unknown how he was going to wake up. We got a call to say that he had awoken and you know we were ecstatic of course at least that was a first step but uh, they also had some other news for us and I don't uh, know whether they thought it was good news for us or bad but to say that he was actually speaking Mandarin. In high school we had to do two languages and I decided okay I'll do Chinese but it was basic fluency. After waking up from the coma I saw a Chinese looking nurse and because the first person I spoke to was in Mandarin my internal monologue became Chinese. It did suddenly get really a lot better after the coma because it just became so much more quick. I'd probably first three days, three or so days, I'd only speak Mandarin. And then when my parents came and saw me, uh, I'd speak to them in Mandarin as well. And so that would have really frightened them, thinking, oh God, you know, we're going to have to start learning Chinese. <laughs> so I wrote, I love my mum, I love my dad, I'll get better in Mandarin, and then gave it to them. I'm sure that the nurse translated it for them. It says, I love my dad, I love my mum, I love you all. So you're in that one, Mark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It sort of was like uh, a little hook that he could grab onto and, you know, he's, uh, as I said, made a fantastic recovery, far better than anyone could have expected. And it's been on a platform of his Mandarin skills. Well, you've come a fair way since then. Yeah. So after I came out of rehab, I needed to said, oh, I need to do something with myself. My Mandarin's kind of the thing that I'm doing at the moment, so how about I just do one unit of Mandarin at Melbourne Uni? So I progressed pretty quickly and then they said, okay, Ben, there's this competition at the Victorian finals of Mandarin. Do you want to represent Melbourne Uni? I said, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And then luckily got to the Australian finals and then went on to represent Australia and China. You know, it was an amazing time really that he could do that because he was one of the youngest contestants. It was a, a fantastic way of almost letting us know that, you know, I'm going to recover from all of these challenges that I've had. My, my, my voice is slightly higher when I speak Chinese, which is interesting. Okay, cafe la la. <laughs> I mean, I, I pronounce words wrong all the time because I might use the wrong tone or something like that, and it means something completely different. A good example of the language is that my name Ben, Ben means stupid in Chinese. So the first time I introduced myself to a Chinese person, they say, "Hey, ni hao, wo jiao Ben," and <laughs> they kind of laugh, you know, "Hi, I'm called stupid." <laughs> they thought I was almost joking. I would say I'm fluent in Mandarin. I would not say I'm fluent fluent, but I'm fluent enough to talk with friends and to host a, in basic Mandarin a, a little, a small TV show. Hello, 大家好,欢迎收看本期美男四房菜节目. Hosting in your second language is difficult. You know, I've got one host is from Taiwan, one host is from mainland China, so they speak, of course, fluent Mandarin. Oh my god! If I try to speak at that pace, I'll just tumble and fall over my own words. Go One, two. Go in, lady. Gentlemen, local hello, I mean, they've really welcomed me with open arms because there are too many people that study the language Mandarin at this level. You know, that really gives you a lot of um, force behind yourself to just keep going and going and continuing that kind of Chinese path. I think uh, one thing that's very telling though is when I look back over everything that's happened, I've never heard him once uh, complain. He's always been so positive and I think that's part of why he's recovered so well. I hope I'm helping bridge the relationship between China and Australia and not only on just a business level but also on entertainment and then also, who knows, in the future on, um, on a diplomatic level as well. Yeah.